Flame test is the second major preliminary test. It works on the principle that elements give characteristic color in flame. So you begin to know this color that is exhibited by this element must belong to this particular, you understand? So when various elements are being subjected to flame, we begin to know, well, we'll be able to know, um, identify the element by the color they possess. Flame test is carried out by dipping platinum or nichrome wire in concentrated hydrochloric acid to clean it. So you have your nichrome wire or platinum wire, it's a wire, you dip it in corn tetras of uh, hydrochloric acid, it will clean it, okay? Then you have to moisten the sample with HCl, then use your platinum wire, dip a little of it, and subject it to the hottest part of the flame. Then you watch closely, what color will it give you? When it gives you a particular color, you begin to identify, okay, this color is this element. This color is this element. That's all, all we're talking about here. Now we say, uh, then moisten a small amount of substance with concentrated HCl in the watch glass. This is followed by picking up little quantity with the wire and introducing it into the non-luminous zone, the hotter zone, and noting the color changes in the flame. Now, color of substances under flame test. So, it is important you should know the various colors that are being exhibited by various elements when they are being subjected to flame. So, let's see color of substances under flame test. All right, let's look at the color of substances under flame test. Observation and inference. All right, now in the flame test like we have seen, remember I said earlier on in flame test is we use a nichrome wire or platinum wire, dip it in corn HCl to clean it, and after which, after cleaning it, we moisten a little of the sample in the wash glass with a HCl, we use a nichrome wire or a platinum wire, take a little of it, pick a little of it, and subject it to the hottest part of the flame. The color that, give, that it gives you, you will be able to use it to identify the various uh, uh, element that is present. We say when you get, when you do that, you get brick red or orange red. We say it is calcium in flame test. It does what you get. If you have brilliant or intense yellow, you say it's sodium that is present. When you have yellow sparks, yellow and sparks in it, you have iron that is present. When you have light purple, you have potassium. When you have bluish color, as blue, you have lead that is present. Bluish green, it is copper that's present. And when you have green flashes, that's green flames, you say it is zinc. So, with this, we'll be able to identify, remember our business, is to stream down the various, uh, the idea of getting the element present using our, our preliminary word observations. So from there, you'll be, you'll be able to know the exact element that is present therein. We have exercises here. They say we should carry out the flame test of the following. Copper salt, like copper sulfate or copper chloride. You know that we are testing for copper here. And what will copper give you? You know that it is bluish, uh, bluish green. When we have sodium salt, such as sodium chloride or sodium sulfate, we are testing for sodium, which is brilliant or intense yellow. We have potassium salt or potassium sulfate or potassium nitrate. All right? We are testing for what? The potassium present, which is light purple. Lead salt. We are testing for lead, such as lead chloride, lead sulfate. We are testing for lead, which is bluish. That is blue. Calcium. Uh, and so on, calcium is brick red or orange red. So when these exercises are given to you in terms of maybe the practical aspect where the samples will be provided and the, the gas and all that will be provided, you proceed with the principles. You get your nichrome wire or platinum wire, dip it in corn HCl, then moisten a little of the sample with corn HCl, 
dip a little of it and subject it to flame. Whatever color comes out, you write your test and your observation and your inference. And that's so sample A plus, um, uh, uh, let's call it the flame. What do you observe? Greek red, the inference, cash from present, and so on and so forth. So that is all about what the flame test. Now, we'll move down to action of heat. Action of heat. Okay, let's take, see what happens in the action of heat, then that of gases. Now, in action of heat, we say heating a substance is the third method of preliminary test. Usually, a small quantity of the substance in ignition or boiling tube is heated directly in the Bunsen flame until no further changes occur. Below are some of the changes that take place. So let's see the changes. Action of heat on substances. Now we have the substances and we have our inference. Um, this time I don't think I'm gonna write. Now, for water of crystallization, a colorless vapor evolves, which condense at the cooler part, that is the mouth of the test tube. Of the test tube, the vapor ten white copper two tetrazo surface six solid blue and also blue cobalt two chloride paper pink. So what is the inference here? Water of crystallization, hence HCO three minus hydroxide except hydroxide of sodium and potassium ions are present. So when we're testing for when we heat it and you get some water of uh, water at the uh, the mouth of the test tube. So you know that water is that of crystallization and what you should be expecting is uh, trisocarbonate present. So let's look at the, the second one is for sublimate. One, if you have white in sublimate, when you have white ammonium salt present, when you have yellow sulfur present, when you have violet vapor, iodine present. The next one is residue. Remember we're dealing with heat here. When you have heat, you've heated your substance or your sample and you have reddish brown residue, ion 2 oxide is present. If you have reddish brown when hot and yellow when cool, lead 2 oxide is present. Yellow when hot and white when cool, zinc oxide is present. Black deposit, oxide of copper and iron. Then colorless residue, you have absence of iron. 2, ion 3, and copper 2. So these are the things you get. It follows that whenever a substance is heated, we look out for water of crystallization, sublimation, color change of the residue, and identify possible gas or gases given up. So these are the things that we look out for when we are heating. Alright? So water of crystallization, sublimation, the color change of the residue, because from the residue, we'll be able can identify what the sample is. For example, reddish brown, you have iron 2 oxide. If the red, uh, residue is reddish brown, if it is a uh, black deposit, oxide of copper and iron, and so on. So the next one is gases. So we're going to run through gases quickly, but um, yeah, let's go through it. Gases, a generation of gases evolve in qual uh, qualitative analysis helps greatly in identifying mainly the acid radicals, which are the anions, and on some rare occasions, metallic radicals. Rare occasions. So in gases, majorly, we're looking at the acid radicals. There are few occasions that we look for the metallic word cations. Gas may be given off when, one, a substance is heated. When you heat a substance, for example, um, calcium trisocarbonate 4, you're going to get CO2, which is a gas. Two, another way is two or more substances react together. Example, addition of hydrochloric acid to a salt. When you react hydrochloric acid with uh, calcium trisocarbonate 4, you get a gas.
Now, the gas above is identified by four major characteristics, namely the color of the gas, the odor of the gas, action on litmus paper, confirmatory tests. Now, we are going to look at the procedure, observation, and inference of some individual gases. We're just going to go through them, not all of them. But in our experimental uh, procedures, in the practicals, you will see, we'll cover the rest. Let's look for hydrogen gas. Let's test for hydrogen gas. The procedure is, put small pieces of zinc metal into a flat bottom flask and add dilute HCl to it. So I have a zinc metal, I put it in my flat bottom flask, that's all. I add what? Dilute, <coughs> dilute HCl to it. When the gas is given off, introduce a burning split into the gas. So when once I add HCl, there will be a gas coming out. They introduce a burning split into the gas. Now, this is the observation. It is colorless. The gas coming out is colorless and odorless gas and neutral to litmus. Yes, so you test it with a litmus paper, it's neutral. The gas gives pop sound with burning spleen. So it gives out a pop sound Poo! with a burning spleen. So by that, you know that it's hydrogen gas. Inference, the gas is neutral to litmus and hydrogen is confirmed. Now, test for oxygen gas. Put some quantity of potassium trisochloride, five crystals in a test tube. Add a little manganese four oxide and mix. Heat the mixture. Test the gas with litmus paper and glowing spleen. Observation, when you do that, a colorless, odorless gas which is neutral to litmus, but rekindles glowing spleen is given off. Inference. The gas is neutral and oxygen is confirmed. Oxide, nitrate, or chloride present. Now we want to test for water vapor. Procedure. We put a small quantity of hydrated copper two tetrazos of a six crystals in the test tube and heat lightly in order to avoid the composition of the salt. Observe the gas giving off and test with litmus paper and white and hydrous copper sulfate. Okay. Observation. A colorless and odorless gas is given off. It has no effect on litmus paper. The gas changes white and hydrous copper two tetrazos of a six to blue. The inference is neutral gas and water vapor confirmed. Hydrated salt or hydrogen trisocarbonate for present. Test for carbon four oxide procedure. We put a little calcium trisocarbonate four into a flat bottom flask, a little calcium. Follow this with the addition of dilute hydrochloric acid. Okay, the same thing. Add our HCl. Observe the gas giving off the big and test it with litmus paper. Using delivery to pass the gas into another test tube containing lime water. When that is done, observation: a colorless gas which turns moist litmus paper red. The gas extinguishes burning spleen and turns lime water murky. So you know that. CO2, major latent line water mercury inference, and acidic gas, and CO2 is confirmed. So, trisocarbonate 4 or hydrogen trisocarbonate 4 is present in the solution. Now, if you want to test for hydrochloric acid gas procedure, put about 1 gram of sodium chloride, so sodium chloride in a dry flat bottom flask, and carefully add concentrated tetrazosulfate 6 drop by drop because con H2SO4 is corrosive. It burns when it touches. Test the gas given off with litmus paper. So you have your litmus paper there. Dip a glass rod into con ammonia solution and bring it close to the mouth of the container where HCl gas is given off. So when you dip your uh, glass rod in ammonia, con ammonia, and bring it to the mouth, now what do you observe? A colorless gas with irritating or pungent smell is given up. The gas changes moist blue litmus paper to red and forms dense white fumes with corn ammonia solution. Inference, the gas is acidic and HCl gas is confirmed. Chloride ion is present in the solution. Sulfur so 4 oxide and so on. We have many of the ammonia gas. Most of all these gases, we're going to carry them out in the lab to see how they work. It's not just about giving you the principles. When we want to carry out the uh, experiment in the lab with the procedures as still there, which we're going to follow. Chlorine gas, um, bromine gas, we have iodine gas, and so on.
Now, after that, the experiment will be identify the gases and note the observation. Now, one, the color of the gas above in the experiment, order of the gas, action of burning spleen inside the gas, the changes in the color of moist blue and red leaf newspaper. So, when we carry out this in the lab, these are the things we are going to look at for. So, <clears throat> quickly, the other one major experiment is identification of cations. This is very important to us. So, we, we have to pay attention to this. It's very important. Identification of cations, that's the metallic radicals. In identifying some cations present in a given salt, the use of precipitation reaction, that is sodium hydroxide and, am and ammonia, sodium aqueous sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia solution for identification of cations, and the confirmatory test on the cations is the major concern of this section. In the, in the reaction, one should look out for one, whether a precipitate, a precipitate is formed or not, two, the color of the precipitate, if any, three, whether the precipitate is soluble or insoluble in excess of the reagent, and so on. So let's look at action of sodium hydroxide solution. Now, to a little solution, this is how we're going to start, to a little solution of the salt in a test tube. So I have a little solution, let me say it is a zinc sulfate. A little of it, put it in a test tube. Add sodium hydroxide solution little by little until the alkali is present in excess. Adding drop by drop is necessary because some precipitate dissolves as soon as they are formed. So if excess sodium hydroxide is added, it will lead to wrong observations. So and consequently wrong conclusions. If there is no precipitate, warm gently and test for ammonia gas. So let's see what we get. Now observation and inference. Remember I said we're going to make use of that of sodium hydroxide and we also use that of ammonia. So the first one here is uh, sodium hydroxide added to the sample. When that happens, what do we expect? So I'm going to write this out. You have to master it, if possible, memorize it so that when you're carrying out your practicals, you begin to know exactly what you're expecting and what you will get. So let's take note of that. Observation and inference. So let's deal with this. On the last one, I think I'll read that out. Now, one of the major ways which we use in identifying our cations, which we say the precipitation what procedure, is to use our sodium hydroxide, aqueous, and um, ammonia solution, aqueous. So the first one, when we add our sodium hydroxide and the observation is white gelatinous precipitate in drops, which is soluble in excess. White gelatinous precipitate in drops, which is soluble in excess. We're looking at zinc or lead or aluminum are present. So zinc, a, a compound that contains zinc or aluminum or lead, give us white gelatinous precipitate in drops, which is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. Now, if we have a dirty white precipitate, which is insoluble in excess sodium hydroxide, it is calcium present. So, calcium gives us what? A dirty white precipitate, which is what? Insoluble in excess what? Sodium hydroxide. Dirty white is so, uh, calcium, sorry. It's calcium. Zinc, lead, aluminum is white gelatinous in drops. Which, white precipitate in drops, which is soluble in excess. A light or pale blue gelatinous precipitate insoluble in excess of water is formed. Copper present. So copper is what? Insoluble in drops and excess of sodium hydroxide solution. Green gelatinous precipitate insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide solution. Ion 2 present. So remember, copper is blue gelatinous in drops, insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. Ion 2 is green gelatinous precipitate in drops insoluble in excess. Ion 3 is reddish brown in drops insoluble in excess. Now, when we have no precipitate is formed, there's no space for that, no precipitate is formed, but on warming, 
We tried it, there was no precipitate, so we have to warm. On warming, a gas which turns red litmus paper blue, you know, blue litmus paper to red is acidic, red litmus paper to blue is basic. Uh, and that gas forms white fumes with concentrated HCl is given up. The gas is ammonia. The only alkaline gas is ammonia. So the gas is ammonia from an ammonium salt. So presently there is an ammonium salt, so it's ammonia. So, so far, by that, we begin to identify, we'll be able to identify what is given to us. So, we say zinc, lead, or aluminum give us white gelatinous precipitate in drops, which is soluble in essence. Cash will give us dirty white precipitate, uh, white precipitate in drops, which is insoluble in essence sodium hydroxide. Copper is blue gelatin, uh, yes, light blue. A light or pale blue gelatinous precipitate in drops, which is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. Iron 2 is dirty green or green gelatinous precipitate, insoluble in excess, in drops and in excess. Iron 3 is also in drops in, in excess, it is insoluble. They will say when there is no precipitate form, which will heat the sample and test it with what? HCl. It gives us a dense white film is formed and a red uh, liquid paper turns to blue and we say ammonia present from an ammonium salt. Do not forget, it is important that through the reagent the ring, we'll be able to identify the various what uh, cut ions that are present. So it should be in your head. When I say calcium, you say it's dirty white precipitate in drops and insoluble in essence. You should know that. If I say blue, sorry, if I say copper, you say it's blue gelatinous precipitate in drops, which is insoluble in essays. Ion 2 is green or light green in drops, insoluble in essays. Ion 3, reddish brown in drops, which is insoluble in essays. Uh, uh, other call it zinc, aluminum, or lead. They give us white gelatinous precipitate in drops, which is soluble in excess of what? Sodium hydroxide. By the time we have this in our head, if we are asked to carry out the experiment, and I say sample A, which you don't know what it is, and when you put in your uh, sodium hydroxide as a reagent, it gives you a white gelatinous precipitate in drops because soluble in excess. You can easily say aluminum, zinc, or lead is present. But if you don't know that that is what the end point of that reaction is, the inference is, then you cannot determine your cut ion in your experiment. Okay, so it is important we have that in our head. So now we are just done with uh, that of uh, how they call it uh, sodium hydroxide. So we are going to look at that of ammonia as a reagent. So ammonia now, action of ammonia solution, we are done with that of uh, uh, sodium hydroxide as a reagent. Remember sodium hydroxide, we have zinc, lead, aluminum, white gelatin uh, gelatinous precipitate drops, which is soluble in excess. Ion 2 is light green, precipitate in drop in soluble in excess. Ion 3 is reddish brown in drop in soluble in excess. Copper. Remember, is blue in drop insoluble in excess. Uh, other call that guy. Calcium is dirty white pre uh, gelatinous precipitate in drops insoluble in excess. So which one is soluble? Just the first one. Zinc, lead, or aluminium. So white gelatinous precipitate in drops, which is soluble in excess. White precipitate insoluble in excess. Calcium. A light or pale blue gelatinous precipitate insoluble in excess. Copper. Gray, uh, zinc, and uh, ion 2 and ion 3, they are all green and reddish brown. They are all insoluble in drops and in excess. But we are not going to get the same thing when we test this with, uh, how do you call it, uh, ammonia. So let's see what we get. Now, the first one was what? Uh, Sodium hydroxide, the next one is with aqueous ammonia. NH3 aqueous. Now with ammonia, you can take note of that. Why the latinous precipitate, which is soluble, which is soluble in SS of ammonia solution, SS of ammonia. So here, 
our Lizzie is present. So there's a change now. So remember, in sodium hydroxide, zinc, aluminum, and lead gave us white gelatinous precipitate in drops, all right, which were soluble in excess. But in ammonia solution, only zinc is soluble in excess. So let's move further. That's two. Now. Okay, now we are here again. The first one was with sodium hydroxide, and the second one is with ammonia. In sodium hydroxide, okay, let's talk about ammonia now. We have white gelatinous precipitate in drops, which is soluble in excess of ammonia solution. We have zinc, two, ion present. White gelatinous precipitate, which is insoluble in excess of uh, ammonia solution, we have lead and aluminum present. Remember, lead and aluminum were soluble in sodium hydroxide, but they are not here. Only zinc is soluble here. We have a light or pale blue gelatinous precipitate, which is soluble in excess ammonia solution, copper. Copper in sodium hydroxide was not soluble, but it's soluble in ammonia. Dirty green precipitate, ion 2, is still insoluble in drugs and in excess. Reddish brown gelatinous precipitate, insoluble in excess of uh, ammonia. Excess of NH3 take your solution. So, and uh, when no visible reaction or no precipitate form, calcium and ammonium ion present. So, the, the last one, which is no visible reaction in sodium in ammonia solution, no visible reaction in ammonia solution is either calcium or ammonium ion present. But in the other guy, in sodium hydroxide, no visible reaction. They say we should uh, move further by heating, then bring HCl, 
then they give us dense white fumes, which shows that it is ammonia. So now let us look at them carefully and see the difference therein. Sodium hydroxide as a reagent, when you test it with, when you get white gelatinous precipitate, which is insoluble in drops, which is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide, white gelatin gelatinous precipitate in drop, which is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide, we have lead, zinc, or aluminum present. The in ammonia, we have only zinc present. Only zinc is soluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. Then two, in sodium hydroxide, we have dirty white precipitate, which is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide. Okay? Dirty white precipitate. That is calcium. But here, in ammonia, we have white gelatinous precipitate in drugs, which is insoluble in excess of ammonia solution. We have lead or, uh, lead or aluminum present. Alright? They are not soluble in ammonia. We have, in sodium hydroxide, we have zinc, which gives us green gelatinous precipitate in drops, and insoluble in excess. In ammonia, it's still the same, insoluble in excess. We have iron 2, reddish brown in sodium hydroxide, reddish brown in ammonia, they are all insoluble in excess. Then what again? Copper is blue gelatinous precipitate in drops, which is insoluble in excess of sodium hydroxide, but in ammonia, it is soluble to give us a deep blue so, uh, uh, coloration. Light or pale blue precipitate when... Okay, yeah, this is ammonia. Okay, light or pale blue precipitate, which is soluble in excess ammonia solution to form a deep blue solution. So, in ammonia, it dissolves to form what? A deep blue solution. You see it when we run the experiment. So, that is what... The precipitation what reaction where we use uh, sodium hydroxide and we also make use of what ammonia solution. So we are going to do the confirmation test, but I don't think that is going to be now. When as we carry out our experiment, we will see how that works. The uh, confirmatory test. This so. With this, we cannot take on, we're done with identification of cations. So now we're going to look at identification of anions.